Siege, Brawl Stars' newest game mode. Is it the worst game mode? Well, I think it's time to talk about that. Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Carlos Time, and it is time to brawl today. We're gonna talk about Siege, and I'm not gonna lie, I really like Siege a lot. I think it's, well, it's one of my favorite game modes, but it does have a lot of glaring issues, and that's caused a lot of people to say that it is the worst game mode in the game. So today we're gonna talk about some of the issues with Siege, and some ideas on how it can be fixed, and I wanted to give a huge thank you to everybody that contributed on this awesome community post. A lot of people were talking about things. We had 1.6 thousand comments of people People talking about Siege and a lot of the stuff in today's video is going to be actually inspired from my awesome YouTube community because you guys are awesome. Okay, let's jump into this, but um, if you're looking for a ridiculously strong Siege comp, uh, the one in today's video is so strong. Like, ridiculously strong. I ended up pushing like 100 trophies, like straight wins uh, because it's so good. Basically, you got Colt who clears out with his super, like even if he's not using it on enemy brawlers, he uses it to clear out a lot of the walls and stuff like that, so that it opens up the field, so that Pam, Leon, and Colt can all just like attack people from a distance. It completely eliminates the ability for throwers and tanks to even do well, and that's two of the three best types of brawlers to play on this game mode. So, uh, anyway, let's go ahead and continue talking about Siege. Problems! Trophy losses are too harsh! Oh, man, it is definitely fun if you win in Siege, but there is nothing more frustrating than jumping in to try and get your star token, and you're playing with randoms, which that's another issue we'll talk about, and you're playing with randoms, and you end up losing match after match after match after match. You guys know what? I've been there. You've been there. I know what it's like to lose six Siege matches in a row, and that's 60 trophies, and it takes you, like, forever to climb those trophies back up. It's really annoying. It's very frustrating. To me, the hype of winning in Siege doesn't justify the loss, um, especially playing with randoms. And that's a big issue with Siege, is how important it is to have a good team comp in Siege in comparison to some of the other game modes that are a little bit more fast-paced, you know? One bad player can absolutely cost you the whole match, or even even just random matchmaking in Siege, it's a, it's a big problem because sometimes you just happen to get somebody on your team that <laughs> is playing Poco, who is not good in Siege right now. Don't play Poco in Siege. Another really big issue is the difference in the different waves from the bolts, okay? So like the first set of bolts, you can get five, the first wave, and really like there's, it takes so long for that to happen and then that first wave really isn't very important for like the bot. like. You can deal zero damage onto the enemy Ike with that first wave, and really the only benefit from that first wave really is to just regain control so that you can have control of the middle for the second wave, and then ideally the third wave. Like, it's important, but not for actually spawning a bot. It's just important for gaining control. But then you have the last wave where you can lose three times. You can lose the first bot. You can lose the second bot. You can... You can lose the third bot, but if you win the fourth bot, you can win because there's so many bolts like it's 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 interesting now I do think that it is important that you should always have an opportunity for you to turn things around It's really important that you don't just feel like well all hope is lost like that's not fun You don't want that but it is ridiculous that a team can dominate the first three bots and lose because they had 16 bolts on the third wave, but the enemy team had 15 bolts on the third wave, and they happened to clear out the enemy boss. So next time they had 15 bolts that you had to catch up from, but that's insanely difficult even though you have an increased number of bolts being spawned in the middle. It's just... That's not fun either. Another issue with Siege is that it is basically the only mode that hardcore pushers actually use. This makes it very difficult for randoms, especially around the 400 to 500 trophy area, to play because they will be facing against top teams most of the time. Obviously the big reason why this is an issue is because it's so much easier to climb in trophies if you are actually good and you have teammates that are actually good as well. Like, way easier and way faster for you to push trophies than in any of the other game modes. Except maybe Brawl Ball. Brawl Ball is like, you, you, if you're really dominant, you can push really fast in Brawl Ball. Another issue with Siege is the randomness of the bolts, okay? So the first five are 
always really close to the midline of the map, but after that it can extend even up to four tiles away from the midline. And an issue is that a lot of the times you'll have several bolts spawn on your side before they actually spawn on the enemy side. We're talking like four tiles from the midline, right? I watched a few matches today, four spawned on my side, not right in a row, there were some in the midline. It was like, my side, midline, my side, midline, midline, my side, midline, my side. And then we finally had a bolt spawn on the enemy side. And that is completely unfair for it to spawn on my side so many times. If it spawns on my side, I think that the bolt should spawn on the enemy side next or at least within the next couple of bolts or something like that. Also, because the maps are pretty similar, the meta tends to be pretty stale. There are a few brawlers who are excellent in the game mode and a lot of brawlers that can be decent, but not good enough to be competitive. Although that's kind of like an issue that Bounty and Heist also has, so I don't know how much that needs to be fixed, but we'll talk about ideas on how to fix that a little bit later on. Also, I think it is completely ridiculous that a Frank, a Bull, and either a Pam, Penny, or Jesse can take out an enemy Ike in one single push by themselves if the enemy team isn't actually paying attention. The reason why this is possible is mostly due to Frank's stun, the fact that he's able to stop the Ike, which is nuts, and we'll talk about that later. Okay, now I've talked about a lot of the issues with Siege right now, and I don't want you guys to think that I'm coming across as like complaining of the game mode, I'm not. I'm just listing a lot of the issues that you guys have mentioned in the community posts, as well as some things that I have noticed that uh, makes the game a little bit less fun than I think it could be. Now let's talk about some solutions. Now there were a ton of ideas and suggestions that people put in the comment community posts. A lot of them were really excellent, and I'm not even gonna touch on all of the excellent ones. I'm just gonna talk about the ones that I personally think would would be best for Siege. Now to me, one of the biggest issues with Brawl Stars right now is that matchmaking uh, for randoms is really, really rough. Um, this is a whole other issue and this is true for any of the game modes and I already talked about this in another video So I'm not gonna really cover it here But the matchmaking for randoms needs to be improved in some way first actual suggestion is to make it plus seven for every win and minus seven for every loss or Make the matches actually last a little bit longer But out of those two options I think that decreasing the amount of uh, trophies that it's worth is a better option second thing siege needs is more maps Now I do think that this is just a matter of time. I don't think that this is really considered a problem I think that supercell released the game with the three maps and they were like, okay, let's put that out there. Let's see what we like. Let's see what we dislike. And uh, now I think that they're, they're most likely going to be adding some more maps. Uh, that's just a guess on my part, but I think it's a smart guess. <laughs> Uh, that will be receiving some new siege maps in the next update third change Frank should not be able to stun the enemy Ike I do think that he should be able to stun the enemy robot I think that's a good defensive reason to use Frank or maybe even make it so that the Frank sp Stun duration is the same as it is in boss fight or not boss fight. I always call it boss fight. It's big game Oh my gosh big hunt whatever it's called Make it so that it only stuns the Ike turret for just a split second. Next thing I would change in Siege is to actually decrease the randomness of the bolt spawning. I'm fine with the bolt spawning away from the midline, but rather than four tiles away from the midline, I'm thinking like two tiles away from the midline, similar to like um, how it is in gem grab. But I also do think that if a bolt spawns on your side, then within the next two or three bolts, it should also spawn a bolt on the enemy side so that it's a lot more fair. Next change that I would like to see in Siege is that the Ike would actually attack with a little bit more pinpoint or accuracy rather than doing some splash damage. It's really annoying when you're trying to follow your bot. You literally have to like stay two or three tiles behind the bot if you go down the same lane as the bot because of that splash damage and uh, I wish that it would maybe even deal damage a little bit faster but with more pinpoint accuracy so that it was less likely to splash onto you that you can like be more aggressive with your push rather than like apprehensively being like ah oh, don't hit me now as far as like the number of bolts versus like how big the bot and how strong the bot should be I heard a lot of ideas on how to actually improve Siege and those bolts uh, and the frequency of the bolts that you're going to be receiving to actually improve the game And I think that this is a big area that really needs to be improved on there are too few bolts on the first push and There are way too many on the last push one idea that somebody suggested was that make it so that both teams would actually spawn their bot So if you got three bolts and the enemy team has two bolts you spawn a level three bot and they spawn a level two and then like the bots like come and fight each other in the middle and then 
the stronger one and the team that pushes better with their bot like ends up like pushing forward and going onto the enemy as uh, Ike. I also heard it suggested that the bot level is actually determined from the difference in the bolt levels of each team. So if a red team has three bolts and the blue team has two bolts, then the red team would spawn a level one bot and the blue team wouldn't spawn anything. I think both these ideas could work. Uh, could be fun, interesting to test out for the developer team, but I think that this next idea is probably the best. First off, I think that the speed of the bolt spawn should be closer to what it's like around the two minute mark in Siege right now, in that it should stay that same speed throughout the entirety of the Siege match. Then, I think what they should do is they should make it so that whenever a team reaches a certain number of bolts, that team would then spawn a bot, and the bolts would actually stop spawning on the map until that bot gets taken out. So let's say that number is 10. That means that once you receive 10 bolts, then you actually spawn a, a bot, and if the team had five bolts, then their five bolts, you can expect them to be able to get their bot up next sooner. So it's more of like a, a tug of war, like, okay, who can get their next bot? It's not a race to get the most bolts immediately for every single wave, but it's a race to get as many bolts over a long period of time so that you can spawn a bot faster and faster and faster. It's very similar to the way that Siege works right now, but it's a little bit more consistent. And this way you don't have to worry about like the waste of that first uh, bot. You just make it so that at 10 bolts, then a bot is spawned and the bot is gonna be the same every single time. And that allows the team to really balance the game mode much easier. They don't have to think about all the different bot levels balancing with like the Ike turret and things like that. All they have to do is they say, okay, the bot is too strong or the bot is too weak. Now we need to buff or, or nerf it so that the game actually feels really good. Also in this case, if by chance your team happens to spawn a bot and the enemy team happens to spawn a bot, then the bots would actually go down separate lanes. So the bots would never fight each other. They would just go, they would try to pass each other, right? And then you would actually have to decide whether to go on the offense or to go on the defense. Personally, I feel like this would be the most fun way to play Siege because you, you know consistently, okay, at 10 bolts, you know how many bolt bots can be spawned, you know how many bolts can be there, you know how strong the bot is going to be, it's going to move the same speed every single time, and overall I think it would just be a much more predictable and enjoyable experience. Because there's nothing more frustrating than your team getting 15 bolts, but the enemy team happened to get 16, and then you guys got crushed even though you had 15 bolts and you guys were doing such a good job and they just happened to get one more bolt than you. In this type of situation, you would have nine, they would have 10, they would spawn a bot, you take it out and then the enemy team can be expecting a bot coming down their side very quickly because that turnaround is going to be almost instant. You pick up that, they're gonna try and prevent you from getting that bolt, obviously, but you have a chance, you have an ability, the time to try and come back from the, the last push rather than basically guaranteeing that you are going to be behind the enemy team. There are a lot of different things with Siege that could be done to try and improve it, and really I wanna know what you guys think about the best ways to improve Siege yourself. Please drop a comment in the section below letting me know what you would like to do to change Siege and what you think about the ideas that I put today. Then go ahead and like your favorite comments and I will be looking through the chat today to try and see if there is maybe something else that I didn't consider that would be better for us to try and improve the siege. And then, guys, and then I will take the feedback that you guys have given me with, along with the thoughts that I have actually put in today's video and be giving that to Supercell so that we can try to, well, at least at least they'll hear it. They'll they'll hear of the right idea, the best ideas to try and improve the game. And that's really what I care about is making Brawl Stars the best game it can be. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with and I really appreciate you watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you subscribe for future Brawl Stars videos. I do them pretty frequently and I do them pretty well if I say so myself. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.